یاد بادا ساغیا آن روی من چو بورا آن نگاه اغلن در احمق مشهور خنده یه بی مثل او بر دل دکانی هم زده پن کرده در دل و مغز و روانم تو را Good evening, everybody. How lovely, how lovely to see you this evening in Diendel from Salzburg. Let me just turn the music down. There is actually a story or a little bit of a history with these Diendel. Um, as you can see, I am wearing an apron or a schütze as they call it in Austria. Let me just put that there for a moment. And now, I had to remind myself of my mother-in-law this evening how this goes. So if it's on the right-hand side, it means you are married. If it is in the middle, it means you're a virgin. And if it is on the left-hand side, then it means that you are available. So that's, you always have to be very careful where you place the bow. This is a bow. You always have to be very careful about where you place the bow. Anybody who's ever going to wear a dindle and doesn't know that, you do have to be careful about where you place your bow of your apron because where you place your bow indicates what position you are on the marital, uh, whatever. Anyway, good evening. My name is Joanna Goffman Seidel and I am your host this evening all the way from rainy Salzburg and I've left the windows open. I hope it doesn't suddenly start pouring down because then you won't be able to hear me and I'm in a winter garden, but it is such lovely fresh air after the heat of Vienna. Um, so I just had to leave this open. And I am going to start this evening again, because you know I like these very much, with a very beautiful love poem. The minute I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind that was. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. And that was by Rumi. Thank you. So good evening. Again, my name is Joanna Godwin Seidel and I'm your host this evening for our reading of 1001 Nights. And we are now on the 467th night of our 1001 nights so we're almost getting towards the middle 
Let's go back a second. Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the woman continued, Now, while the boy lay on my bosom and the waves beat upon me, there swam up to me one of the sailors who climbed on the plank and said, By Allah, I desired thee whilst thou wast yet in the ship, and now I have come at thee, so yield thy body to me, or I will throw thee into the sea. Said I, Out on thee! Hast thou no memory of that which thou hast seen, and is it no warning to thee? Quoth he, I have seen the like of this many a time, and come off safe, and care not. Quoth I, O oh, fellow, are now in a calamity, whence we hope to be delivered by the obedience to Allah, and not by disobedience. But he persisted with me, and I feared him, and thought put him off. So I said to him, wait till this babe shall sleep. But he took the child off my lap and threw him into the sea. Now, when I saw this desperate deed, my heart sank and sorrow was sore upon me. So I raised my eyes heavenwards and said, O oh, thou that interpossessed between a man and his heart, intervene between me and this Leonin brute, for thou over all things are omnipotent, and by Allah, hardly had I spoken when a beast rose out of the sea and snatched him off the blank. When I saw myself alone, my sorrows redoubled, and my grief and longing for my child, and I recited, my course of eyes, the darling child of me, is lost and wrecked my heart with agony. My body, wrecked and red hot coals of love, burning my liver with sore pangs I see. In this, my sorrow shows no gleam of joy, save thy high grace and my expectancy. Has seen, O oh Lord, what unto me befell. My son, I lost, and parting pangs, I dree. Take Ruth on us, and make us meet again. For now, my stay, and only hopes, in thee. I abode in this condition, a day and a night. And when morning dawned, I caught sight of the sails of a vessel shining afar off. Nor did the waves cease to drive me and the winds to waft me on till I reached the ship whose sails I had sighted. The sailors took me up and I looked. And behold, my babe was amongst them. So, so I threw myself upon him and said, oh, oh folk, this is my child. How and whence came ye by him? Quoth they, Whilst we were sailing along the seas, the ship suddenly stood still, and lo, that which stayed us was a beast, as it were a great city, and this babe on its back, sucking his thumbs. So we took him up. Now, when I heard this, I told them my tale and all that had betided me and returned thanks to my Lord for his goodness and vowed to him that never whilst I live would I stir from his house nor swerve from his service. And since then, I have never asked of him aught but he hath given it to me. Now, when she had made an end of her tale, Quoth the Said, I put my hand to my alms pouch and would have given to her, but she exclaimed, Away from me, thou idle man! Have I not told thee of his mercies and the graciousness of his dealings, and shall I take an alms from an other than his hand? 
and I could not prevail with her to accept aught of me. So I left her and went away, reciting these couplets. How many booms conceal the deity, eluding human sight in mystery? How many graces come on heels of stresses and fill the burning heart with jubilee? How many a sorrow in the morn appears and turns at night tide into gladdest gree? If things go hard with thee some day, yet trust the Etern, the almighty God of unity, and pray the prophet that he intercede, through intercession every wish shalt see. And she left not the service of her Lord, cleaving unto his house till death came upon her. And a tale is also told by Malik bin Dinar, Allah have mercy on him, of the pious black slave. We, we were once conflicted with drought at Basara and went forth sundry times to pray for rain, but saw no sign of our prayers being accepted. So I went, I and Ita al-Salami and Sabit al-Banani and Najah al-Bakar and Mohammed bin Wasia and Ayub al, and I cannot say this name at all, al sukutiani and Habib al-Fasi, and Hassan bin Abi Sinan, and Otba al-Gulam, and Salih al-Muzani, till we reached the oratory, when the boys came out of the schools, and we prayed for rain. We've got it here in Salzburg. But saw no sign of acceptance. So about midday, the people went away, and I, and Sabit al-Banani, tarried, in the place of prayer till nightfall, when we saw a black of comely face, slender of shank and big of belly, approach us, clad in a pair of woollen drawers. If all he wore had been priced, it would have not fetched a couple of dirhams. He brought water and made the minor ablution. Then, going on to the prayer niche, prayed two inclinations deftly, his standing and bowing and prostration being exactly similar in both. Then he raised his glance heavenwards, exactly similar in both. And then he raised his heart glance heavenwards, excuse me, and said, O oh my God, and O oh my Lord and Master, how long wilt thou reject thy servants in that which offereth no hurt to thy sovereignty? In that which is with thee wasted, or are the treasuries of thy kingdom annihilated? I conjure thee, by thy love to me, forthwith to pour out upon us thy rain clouds of grace. He spake, and hardly had he made an end of speaking, when the heaven clouded over, and there came a rain as if the mouths of water skins had been opened. <laughs> and when we left the oratory, we were knee deep in water. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Let me just see if I can get a little bit more light going here. <clears throat> Yeah. Ah, that's it, folks. I think, let's see. That's a little bit better. Ah, there we go. That's right. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Until the wind comes in and knocks that lamp down. I hope not, because it's my mother in law's very beautiful lamp. Here we go. This is live theatre, folks. Now, when it was the 468th night, she said, it has reached me, O auspicious king, that hardly had he spoken when the heavens clouded over and there came a rain as if the mouths of water skins had been opened. 
And when we left the oratory, we were knee deep in water and we were lost in wonder at the black. So I accosted him and said to him, uh, woe to thee, art thou not ashamed of what thou sayest? He turned to me and asked, well, what should I say? And I, what, thy saying to Allah, by thy love of me and what giveth thee to know that he loveth thee? Replied he, well, away from me, O thou distracted by the world from the care of thine own soul. Where was I when he gave me strength to profess the unity of the Godhead and vouchsafed unto me the knowledge of him? How deemest thou that he aided me thus, except of his love to me? Adding, Verily, his love to me is after the measure of my love to him. Quoth I, Tarry with me a while, so may Allah have mercy on thee. But he said, I am chattel and the book enjoineth me to obey my lesser master. So we followed him afar off till we saw him enter the house of a slave broker. Now, the first half of the night was past and the last half was longsome upon us. So we went away, but the next morning we repaired to the slave dealer and said to him, hast thou a lad to sell us for service? He answered, yes, I have a hundred lads or so, and they are all for sale. Then he showed us slave after slave, till he had shown us some seventy. But my friend was not amongst them. And the dealer said, these are all I have. But as we were going out from him, we saw a ruinous hut behind his house, and going in, behold, we found the black standing there. I cried, "'Tis he by the Lord of Kaaba," And turning to the dealer said to him, "'Sell me yonder slave.' Replied he, "'O oh, Abu Yahya, this is a pestilent, unprofitable fellow, who hath no concern by night but weeping and by day but repentance. I rejoined, it is for that I want him. So the dealer called him and he came out, showing drowsiness. Quoth his master, take him at thine own price, so, so thou hold me free of all his faults. I bought him for 20 dinars and asked, what is his name? And the dealer answered, my moon. And I took him by the hand and went out with him, intending to go home. But he turned to me and said, Oh, my lesser Lord, why and wherefore didst thou buy me? By Allah, I am not fit for the service of God's creatures. Replied I, I bought thee that I might serve thee myself, and on my head be it. Asked he, but why so? And I answered, Was thou not in company with us yesterday in the place of prayer? Quoth he, And didst thou hear me? And quoth I, It was I accosted thee yesterday and spoke with thee. Thereupon he advanced till we came to a mosque, where he entered and prayed a two-bow prayer. After which he said, O oh, my God and my Lord and Master, the secret that was between us and thee, thou hast discovered unto thy creatures and hast brought me to shame before the worldling. How then shall life be sweet to me now that other than thou hath happened upon that which is between thee and me? I conjure thee to take my soul to thee forthright. So saying, he prostrated himself. And I waited a while without seeing him raise his head. So I took him and behold, he was indeed dead. The mercy of Almighty Allah be upon him. 
I laid him out, stretching his arms and legs, and looked at him. And lo, he was smiling. <laughs> Moreover, his face was radiant with light like a young moon. As we wondered at his case, the door opened and a young, came in, a young man came into us and said, Peace be with you. May Allah make great our reward and yours for our brother Maimun. Here is his shroud. Wrap him in it. So saying, he gave us two robes. Never had we seen the like of them, and we shrouded him therein. And now his tomb is in a place where the men resort to pray for rain and ask their requirements of Allah, be he extolled and exalted. And how excellently well saith the poem of this theme. The heart of Gnostic, honed in heavenly garth, heaven decks and Allah's porters aid afford. Lo, here they drink old wine coming led with a tasneem, the wine of union with the Lord. Safe is the secret twixt the friend and them, safe from all hearts, but from that heart adored. And they recount another anecdote of the devout tray maker and his wife. There was once amongst the children of Israel, a man of the worthiest, who was strenuous in the service of his Lord and abstained from things worldly and drave them away from his heart. He had a wife who was his helpmate, meet for him, and who was at all times obedient to him. They earned their living by making trays and fans, whereat they wrought all through the light hours. And at nightfall, the man went out into the streets and highways seeking a buyer for what they had made. They want to fast continually by day, and one morning they arose fasting and worked at their craft till the light failed them. When the man went forth according to custom to find purchasers for his wares and fared on till he came to the door of the house of a certain man of wealth, one of the sons of this world, high in rank and dignity. Now, the tray maker was fair of face and comely of form, and the wife of the master of the house saw him and fell in love with him, and her heart inclined to him with exceeding inclination. So her husband, being absent, she called her handmaid and said to her, Contrive to bring yonder man to us. Accordingly, the maid went out to him and called him and stopped him as though she would buy what he held in hand. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Let's just remind ourselves how long the next night goes. Oh yes, this is easy peasy. Now, one more night. When it was the 469th night, Shahrazad said, it has reached me O auspicious king, that the maidservant went out to the man and asked, uh, Oh, come in. My lady hath a mind to buy some of our wares after she has tried them and looked at them. The man thought she spoke truly, and seeing no harm in this, entered and sat down as she bade him, and she shut the door upon him. Whereupon his mistre her mistress came out of her room and taking him by the garbadine, drew him within and said, How long shall I seek union of thee? Verily, my patience is at an end on thine account. See now, the place is perfumed and provision prepared, 
and the household was absent this night. And I give to thee my person without reserve. I, whose favours, kings and captains, and men of fortune have sought this long while, but I have regarded none of them. And she went on talking thus to him, whilst he raised not his eyes from the ground for shame before Allah Almighty, and fear of the pains and penalties of his punishment, even as saith the poet, twixt me and riding many a noble dame, was naught but shame which kept me chaste and pure. My shame was to cure her, but haply were. Shame to depart, she ne'er had known a cure. The man strove to free himself from her, but could not. So he said to her, I want one thing of thee. She asked, well, what is that? And he answered, I wish for pure water and that I may carry it to the highest place of thy house and do somewhat therewith and cleanse myself in impurity, which I may not disclose to thee. Quoth she, the house is large and hath cossets and corners, and privies at command. But he replied, I want nothing but to be at a height. So she said to her slave girl, carry him up to the Belvedere on the house terrace. Accordingly, the maid took him up to the very top, and giving him a vessel of water, came down and left him. Then he made the ablution, and prayed a two-bow prayer, after which he looked at the ground, thinking to throw himself down, but seeing it afar off, feared to be dashed to pieces by the fall. Then he bethought of him, his disobedience to Allah, and the consequences of his sin. So it became a light matter to him to offer up his life and shed his blood, and he said, Oh, my God and my Lord, thou seest that which is befallen on me, Neither is my case hidden from thee. Thou indeed are over all things art omnipotent, and the tongue of my case reciteth and saith, I show my heart and thoughts to thee, and thou alone my secret secrecy canst know. If I address thee fain, I cry aloud, or if I am mute my signs for speech I show. I, thou to whom no second be conjoined, a wretched lover seeks thee in his woe. I have a hope my thoughts as true confirm, and heart that fainteth as right well canst throw. To lavish life is hardest thing that be, yet easy and thou bid me life forgo. But, an it be thy will to save from store, Thou, O my hope, to work this work hast power. Then the man cast himself down from the Belvedere, but Allah sent an angel who bore him up on his wings and brought him down to the ground, whole and without hurt or harm. Now, when he found himself safe on the ground, he thanked and praised Allah, to whom belong master, majesty and might, for his merciful protection of his person and his chastity. And he went straight to his wife who had long expected him, and he empty handed. Then seeing him, she asked why he had tarried and what was become of that what he had taken with him and why he returned empty handed. Whereupon he told her of the temptation which had befallen him. And she said, Alhamdulillah, praised be God for the delivering thee from seduction and intervening between thee and such calamity. Then she added, O oh man, the neighbours used to see our light, our oven every night. And if they see us fireless this night, they will know that we are destitute. 
Now, it behoveth, in gratitude to Allah, that we hide our destitution and can join the fast of this night to that of the past and continue for the sake of Allah Almighty. So she rose and filling the oven with wood, lighted it to baffle the curiosity of her women neighbors reciting these couplets. Now, I indeed will hide desire and all repine and light up this my fire that neighbours see no sign, except I what befalls by order of my Lord. Haply, he too accept this humble act of mine. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying, her permitted say. That's it for tonight. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening in from my little Salzburg winter garden today. Let me just put a little bit of music on again, because that's kind of nice, isn't it? Let's see. There we go. This reading has been beautifully augmented by, for me, I don't know whether you could hear it. I don't know whether it came. Thanks, Joanna. I had no idea. I know, right? Just for those of you who, who haven't seen it, I am in a diendel, actually. Let me, let me, I'll show you what a diendel looks like. This is an Austrian traditional outfit called a diendel. Right, which, although I'm not Austrian, I'm wearing, but they are very, very pretty. And I'm, they're very lovely to wear, although I have to say, in summer, wearing one of these things when it's really hot outside, can be an absolute nightmare because the, the material can be quite thick. So, this is a diendel, and with a diendel you have a blouse. Then you have kind of like an overdress, and look, it has pockets, my friend Amy would love that. So a diendel has pockets as well, and um, it sort of goes round like this. Okay, so this is traditional, traditional Austrian national costume, and I actually bought this diendel in Salzburg. So, and then it always has an apron on it. No, I am not getting undressed now. Really. So this is what it looks like without the apron. Okay, and you can get it in all sorts of colors and forms and lengths. And it does up a proper, a proper diendol, does that with hooks like that at the front. And then you take, the, this, is very, this is the important part. So you take it, you always have to wear, or you should wear the traditional thing is to wear an apron with it. And of course you can do lots of different colors, whatever you like. And then you wrap the apron round like so, and then you tie it together with a bow. Now, if I tie it here, I am available and single. Okay, so that's available and single, which is on the left hand side. If I tie it here, I'm probably a very young girl and a woman and I am a virgin. So, and if I tie it here, actually there is one more. If I tie it at the back, unfortunately that means I'm a widow. So if I did that and tied it at the back, apparently that means I'm a widow. So that's the widow. But if I tie it, here on the right hand side and if this is wrong if anybody Austrian is watching it and I've got it wrong and I didn't research this beforehand I asked my 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 mother-in-law to remind me and she's like I think that's right I think it's that way and if I tie it on the right then I am married so that's very important diendel etiquette everybody but I thought I, I left this when I when we came here last time I left it here and I thought it'd be fun as I'm reading again I thought it would be a lot of fun <laughs> to read to you guys in a diendel it's a good reason to get it out because I do really enjoy wearing them um they're a lot of fun they look good and uh yeah and this is actually my favorite this is my favorite diendel I have I have I have to admit I have about three of them no four of them I've got this one then I've got a red one with like a red dress. Um, and then I have 
an actual red dress that is like a dindel, but it's a whole dress. And then I have a Pinskauer Hochzeit dindel. So it's actually a long dindel in pink, which I don't really wear that much anymore because it's I got it a long, long time ago. And um, it's a very, very baby pink. But it's, excuse me, so it's a really, really pretty, pretty, pretty full dress dindel with, in silk with a silk apron. So it's very, very pretty. So yes, this is an Austrian traditional outfit called a dindel. And again, it always has a blouse with it. The, ape, the dress, which you hook together at the front and then an apron. And it comes in, again in all different lengths, in all different styles. Different regions have different colors. They have hats with it as well. You get necklaces with it. You have special shoes with it, a pouch. And the hats from the different regions are different as well. So it's all, it can actually be, it's a little bit, a little bit like a Scottish kilt in that the different regions will have different types of dindel and those dindel will then be specific to like Salzburg, Salzburg land, even in those areas, Pinsgau, Pongau, da 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 da, Tirol, Vorarlberg, they all, even within the, the counties, they all also have their own dindel colors and stuff. So anyway, this is a Salzburg dindel and I like it very much. And I can't remember, uh, I can't remember what the company's called now, where I got it from. Anyway, very, very lovely. So, that was Dindle Etiquette from me tonight on 1,000, nothing to do with 1,001 nights, but hopefully still interesting. It is a wonderful breeze coming in through the window right now. I don't know if you could hear the uh, thunder, but it is thundering very beautifully outside. I want to wish you all, for those of you who have Saturday and Sunday off, um, a wonderful Saturday and Sunday, and um, otherwise have two great work days if you're working and a wonderful Monday as well, of course. And Saman will be back with you to read you the 200, not the 400, sorry. Oh, it's really beginning to start now. The 470th night, I think, on Tuesday evening. And now I'm getting rain done. So I better close that window, move that light away from the rain, and wish you all, without further ado, many, many blessings from me. Have a beautiful, beautiful next few days. Really look forward to Man and I do. I know. Thank you all for listening in so much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Have a lovely few days. Bye-bye. Look after yourself. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.